Hi there. This week, as part of our study, we are going to learn how to critically evaluate a research article. The reason I want to do this is because we are in the midst of a communication revolution. Anyone can post anything on the internet and make it available to anyone else um, at very little cost and most often just for the cost of access to the internet itself. So it's up to us since public policy is determined by you and I, people in the community here in America, we need to be able to critically evaluate the information that we receive. And so I want to take some time looking at research articles, understanding how to evaluate the information that's contained in them, and then how to apply that information as we look at the topic of global climate change. We'll begin on how to review a scholarly document. And the first thing I want to do is talk about what is the difference between a scholarly document and what I'll term pop culture. You can see in the image on the left the headline, Mysterious Explosion Caught on Live TV. This is an example of an article that's coming out of pop culture. It's something that piques a person's interest, but may yet have not any real factual foundation. On the right is an image of a cover of JAMA, which is a highly reputed um, journal, and it's the Journal of the American Medical Association, in which you'll find all kinds of peer-reviewed research articles. Someone does some research, um, they write it up and submit it to a group of peers to evaluate for validity and then once it passes a peer review and goes through an extensive editorial process it can get published in JAMA. The difference between being published in JAMA and being published on the Yahoo front page um, is an enormous amount of work and an incredible amount of time. When we're looking at finding truth in any kind of a topic, it's wise to look for a research article supported by all kinds of research and data and has, that's been published in a peer-reviewed journal. And when you find such an article, there are several things that we're going to take a look at. The first is, what is the publication in which this article is published? Some are more reputable than others. When was it published? I found some um, information in a course that's sold to correspondence students that cites data from the 1940s. Unfortunately, I don't consider that valid as much as information that may have been generated in the late 90s. We'll look at the authors of a publication. We'll take a look at what is credible um, credentials. We'll look at what an abstract is, how to read that, knowing that we need to define unknown terms as you read through the abstract, understand its conclusion and reread as necessary. We'll take a look at how to look at graphs and charts. We'll look at the conclusion if there is one. I will show you where to find the references and how to think about the references and what they tell you about the validity of the article itself and I'll show you where to find a competing interest statement where the authors have to disclose um, anybody that may be funding their research that would seem to be a competing interest. We'll go to an article and I'll highlight some of these things. This is an article called A Globally Coherent Fingerprint of Climate Change Impacts Across Natural Systems. That's the title of this particular article that I've chosen for us to take a look at. The first thing I want to show you is where to find where this article was published. And we'll take a look at right down here at the bottom of the page. I can see that this was published by the Nature Publishing Group. and it was published in the journal Nature. And this gives me the reference information right down here at the bottom so that I can go look it up more extensively online. Many, 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 many articles can be found online. 
and I can show you how to find those using the Google search tools at a later time. The second thing I suggested that we take a look at when we're looking at articles is the date. And I don't know if you've noticed, we'll scroll back down there and take a look at that, when this was published. And this was published in January of 2003. I think that's can be considered relatively current for this topic. And now we'll take a look at who are the authors. The authors are listed right here, Camille Parmesan and Gary Yo. And this information just below, and let's see if I can get this highlighted correctly, um, tells us, I can't get it highlighted as correctly as I'd like, tells us where they are working and where who they are affiliated with. Um, it looks like Camille is with Integrative Biology at the Patterson Laboratories in Austin, Texas, and Gary Yo is a Johnny Andrus Professor of Economics at the Wesleyan University. In order to understand better their validity or, or their credentials in speaking about this topic, you would have to go do some research to find out what else have they published, where else have they published, and who may have quoted them or referenced them in other research articles. Those are all ways that you can find out whether someone is considered reputable in their field. So we've taken a look at the publication this was published in, when it was published, and who the authors are. Let's now take a look at what the abstract is. And the abstract is going to be usually at the beginning of your article and it's this whole section right here forgive the very poor circle there that's in bold and what an abstract does is tells me in a paragraph what this journal article is about so I always read the abstract first let me repeat that I always read the abstract first because it will tell you what the article is about, what um, sort of research was undertaken, and what the conclusion is in one paragraph. I'm going to read the first sentence in this abstract. Causal attribution of recent biological trends to climate change is complicated because non-climactic influences dominate local short-term biological changes. Now the reason I read that to you is because I want you to really understand that when you're reading the abstract, it is not enough to read the abstract. It is very important that you understand the abstract. And if there are any terms that you come across, perhaps in this one, the term causal attribution may be unfamiliar. I want you to be sure to look them up. It's really important that you understand what that abstract is saying. Research language is very specific and it can be somewhat technical which is why you find in your science classes you do a lot with learning vocabulary but the abstract will tell you in a paragraph what this whole thing is about and so if you don't understand it you will not understand the rest of the article go ahead and look up terms um, your Google is your best friend or you might even want to go get an old-fashioned dictionary to look some things up to understand what this abstract is telling you you should also look for a conclusion within the abstract. And that's usually down at the bottom. And this one I can see says, this suite of analyses generates very high confidence as laid down by the IPCC that climate change is already affecting living systems. This is the direction that this article is headed. And you should be able to, when you're done reading the abstract, rewrite in your own words what the research article is about and what the conclusion is. The next thing I take a look at in any kind of a research article is the graphs, are the graphs in the charts. I call this my National Geographic conundrum. Whenever I get a National Geographic in the mail, I never know whether to read the article first or look at the pictures first. Um, and it's totally personal preference. Neither is better than the other. I look at the charts and graphs first to see if it gives me some um, important information about what 
the data, what kind of results the data generated. And this is uh, the first chart in this article, and I will have to say that it looks a little bit intimidating to me. So I will just go ahead and read what the title of it is. In this case, Summary of Data Studying Phenological and Distributional Changes of Wild Species. And you can take a look at what is contained in this. Um, you can go look at more graphs and charts, and I hope this doesn't give you vertigo. My scrolling through this. I wanted just to be able to show you that data is presented in many different forms, and this form that we're looking at is a graph showing the proportion of obs observations counter to climate change predictions versus probability of correct climate attribution. And this is just another way that the researchers have told a story in results as, as a product of their data. After I read the abstract, look at the graphs and charts, I have a couple of choices. I can either go back and read the entire article. Often I will go to a conclusion if I can find one. If not a conclusion that's highlighted and set apart, I go to the last sentence in the article. And this one says, the climate fingerprint found here implicates climate change as an important driving force on natural systems. That is the upshot of this particular research article. And from here, I will take a look at what the references might be. References in a research article refers to this whole category of other people's research that these scientists used as a foundation for their own work. I've often told you that good science generates more questions. And these are the articles that our particular researchers used as a foundation for their research. Finally, I take a look at a competing interest statement. This gives us information about who is funding the researchers. And while I've highlighted more than I care to, this tells us they have no competing financial interests. Um, and this is an important thing to note because if you are looking at an article that is in favor of drilling for oil and yet they're funded by an oil company, it, it causes you to raise some eyebrows. Um, so that's an, an important thing for you to take a look at. Hopefully this gives you the foundation for looking at research articles so that when I, you're asked in this lesson to do so yourself, you'll be able to do that without as much angst as a document like this might produce if it's the first time you've come across it.